Their priests are the priests of Baal, a.k.a. Saturn, a.k.a. Asar, a.k.a. Heru, a.k.a. Jupiter, a.k.a. Zeus. It's all talking about the same thing. Okay? That's where we get the name Vulcan from. Priest of Baal or Vulcan. In the other language, it became Vulcan, right? Vulcan is the god of fire. You're always going to see all these themes interrelated. Fire is a microcosm of the sun. They worship the sun. The sun was also likened unto the serpent because it was an enlightener. In ancient Rome, they had something called the Epidorian serpent. E is, e is in Edward, P is in Peter, I, D is in David, A, U, R, I, A, N. Like for you brothers, when you read um, Revelation 12, it tells you about the great red dragon. That term red and great red dragon is meant to denote fire because the word for red there is pyro like when you say that somebody is a is a pyromaniac or like a pyrotechnic that's an allusion to fire so when it says the great red dragon in revelation 12 and 3 it's talking about all the way from the ancient world that was carried through to ancient rome because ancient rome got their culture all the way from ancient babylon it was basically the same culture. A lot of their law code, Roman law, came from Babylonian law. Okay? So that's why when you read down in Revelation 12, it tells you that the serpent was trying to, was trying to eat the man-child. That was in reference to what? Child sacrifice. Right? Not only, not only that the serpent was trying to devour Christ before he could fulfill his destiny... But on a secondary level, it was in reference to the, the practices of child sacrifice that were associated with venerating the quote-unquote divine serpent, a.k.a. Tammuz, or um, like an ancient Sumer, he was known as Ningizida, I believe his name was, N-I-N-G-H-I-Z-I-D-D-A. Okay, so it's all connected, it's all correlated, but you have... A light bringer on the left hand side, also known as Bacchus or, or uh, Heru or Adonis, and you have on the right hand side that being Christ. And Christ alludes to it, the scriptures allude to it over and over again, where Christ destroys the, any attempts that might be made to associate him with Osiris or Heru. So that's, why, that's how you know when these Kemet dudes talk about how Christ is really. Uh, Osiris, they have no idea what they're talking about. That's why Christ said what? He said, you know, he said, I'm not the God of the dead, I'm the God of the living. Like, for example, in Mark 12 and 26 or 27, where Christ states about the Most High that he is not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living. Who's that in reference to? That's in reference to Osiris. Because Osiris was known as what? The God of the dead. So he's creating that differentiation. When you go to Revelation, the third chapter, I believe somewhere around five or six, maybe seven, where Christ is speaking to the church at Philadelphia through the angel, and he states that he hath the key of David, and that he can open and no man can shut it, and he shut up and no man open it. That was a condemnation of the Roman god Janus, because Janus was Janus and Sybil, the so-called father god and the mother goddess, because they were known as the openers and the shutters, or Petulcius and Clusius. I covered this, or I touched on this in volume one. So all throughout the scriptures, my point is that Christ goes out of his way to make sure that there is no correlation made between himself and these false gods. But you have to understand the Bible through a historical lens or through a historical context to grasp that. If you don't understand the, the historical context of what many of the statements were that were made by the apostles of Christ and why they made them, you're not going to get the full impact. Like in, like in 2 Thessalonians, where Paul states about the man of sin, who was he referencing? He's talking about Pan. He's talking about Attis. He said that man of sin be revealed. That name Attis, which is just the, the, the Phrygian version of Adonis or Tammuz, spelled A-T-T-I-S, it literally means man of sin. And Attis, by the way, Attis is one of the main gods that's worshipped. Remember, his mother 
is Sybil, C-Y-B-E-L-E. And as I've already stated, she was the goddess of knowledge. She's also the goddess of the key. And Addis, he was castrated in honor of his mother. That's another thing. The so-called Catholic priesthood, the reason why they're made to be celibate is because they have to follow the rituals that are stipulated by the mother goddess. The mother goddess demands that her priests and priestesses be celibate. That's why nuns and monks and priests are not allowed to engage in sexual activity. That's according to the dictates of the mother goddess. So the mother goddess, Sybil, C-Y-B-E-L-E, she had her son, Attis, A-T-T-I-S, castrated. And the priesthood of Attis were known as the Gali, G-A-L-L-I. And they were all castrated men who cross-dressed. This is why in this society, they push and they venerate cross-dressers and also transgenders. Because they view divinity in the androgynous entity, meaning the entity that has both male and female parts. Okay? The priesthood of the, of the Catholic Church, all they are, are a watered-down version of the Gali. G-A-L-L-I. You can look them up yourself. As a matter of fact, you brothers should be looking up everything that I'm saying. John McCarrick by the previous Pope, Benedict, removing him from official church duties. I would describe it as an earthquake for the church. Monsignor with Anthony Figueredo. What is Archbishop Vigano's reputation? I know him personally. I know him as a man. I bet you do know him personally. I, be I bet you do. As a man of great integrity, honest to the core. He's worked for three different popes and sent to a Vatican position, a diplomatic position as big as the United States, which means he's a trusted man. Well, what would you trust him with? I would hope that you wouldn't trust him with your son or with your daughter. But like I was saying, just getting back to the point of the uh, celibate priest. That all comes from the mother goddess. And that was the genesis of the premonition that Paul made, or really the admonition that he made in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter and the third verse, where he talked about the priest who would not be allowed to marry. That goes against the ordinances of the Most High. As a man, you're supposed to have a woman, at least one, but you should have a woman. And if you don't have a woman, it should be because you know that you're not ready for a relationship, but just in the, in the overall scheme of things, you're not supposed to be prohibited from having a woman. All, all that creates is the potentiality for sexual depravity. And it, it's really used to promote homosexuality and the, the pederasty cult known as the Catholic priesthood. CBS News has spoken with Vigano to confirm that he stands by those statements. Meanwhile, two prominent U.S. cardinals have disputed some of Vigano's claims, and a man reportedly who worked with Vigano has said they are accurate. Two U.S. bishops have called for an investigation. Nora? Well, there is clearly a battle going on within the Catholic yes, Church at the hierarchy. More on the story says down in Rome. Thank you so much. Well, yes, there is a battle that's going on in the Catholic Church. And it's because they're coming under great scrutiny because they have not been honest with the public. But there are a lot of factions in this society that have not been honest with the public, not just the Catholic Church. Right now, the Catholic Church, they're really at a crossroads because um, they're going to have to acknowledge what they're actually about. But in the process of doing so, they threaten to lose all the esteem that, that they've tried to build all across the world. But certain people are waking up to various degrees. I mean, this, this is truly what is promoting Luciferianism. Because people are looking at the Catholic Church. And that's the main reason why the media is promoting the, the pederasty aspect of the Catholic Church. is to get people to lose faith in the scriptures. Once they've gotten enough people to cast doubt on the, on the veracity of the Bible or the legitimacy of, of the Most High, the God entity... Then they can just say, you know what, the Catholic Church will just continue doing what it's been doing, which is ruling behind the scenes and acting as the spiritual aspect of this current Babylonian society. But this is purposeful why they keep talking about the, um, the child molestation. They don't want people to look at the Catholic Church as a, um, as, a, as a construct of righteousness because they know 
that by osmosis you're going to stop you're going to start to doubt the importance of the Bible because people associate the Bible with the church system. Okay, so now this is going to be another segment on the quote unquote Catholic Church molestation issue. All right, now to this story we've been following. The Attorney General of Missouri is defending a new investigation of sex abuse within the Catholic Church, even though he'll have to rely on the cooperation of church leaders. Missouri is the first state to announce an investigation into clergy abuse since Pennsylvania. Now, brothers, did you see that? These photos are crafted and composed in a way to show you what the quote unquote Catholic Church is actually about. Let me rewind it back just a little bit. Pennsylvania sex abuse within the Catholic Church, even though he'll have to rely on the cooperation of church leaders. Missouri is the first state. You see that? As I stated in the earlier part of this video, and as I've been stating every time that I speak on this topic, especially in reference to the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church is an offshoot of the Babylonian mystery school system. So that means that there's always going to be a correlation between fire worship, sun worship, and serpent worship. You understand? The cross is not for Christ, it's for Tammuz. Tammuz was a sun god figure. He, he was not just a serpent god figure, he wasn't just a vegetation or a, a uh, revitalization figure. He was also associated with the sun by osmosis. That's why you see they frame the rosary or the thought director, direct your thoughts to Tammuz. And they have the sunlight directly behind the quote unquote rosary to announce an investigation into clergy abuse since Pennsylvania released a scathing grand jury report last month. That report identified more than 300 abusive priests and more than 1,000 child victims over seven decades. Nikki, but Look at this. 300 plus abusive priests. There's no way that you're going to tell me that this is not institutionalized behavior and that they're not being trained in certain ideologies of the Babylonian mystery school system behind the scenes. That has to be the case. And pay attention even to the font. As I told you brothers earlier, that color scheme of black, white, and red, that's for the black mass. That's for the veneration of Pan. And you'll see the print here is in what? Black and red, the background is in white. Nikki Batiste is here with the new push for investigations. Nikki, good morning. Good morning. Top, pro top prosecutors in multiple states tell CBS News they're reviewing the Pennsylvania report and considering options for their own investigations. But different states have different laws over how far they can go. We visited Missouri, where some victims' advocates worry a new investigation won't have the teeth needed to get to the truth. I'm grateful for the opportunity to tell my story. They're meeting for the first time, but for decades, Michael Sandridge and Joe Eldridge shared a painful connection. For the two of you at your lowest point, what did that look like? It looked like a rope around my neck and me sitting on the windowsill, ready to jump. I'd be driving in a car <laughs> and think if, if I hit the bridge and I get killed that way, then I don't have to think about anything. Sandridge says he couldn't think about the abuse he endured in the early 1970s, starting at the age of 10, when he says a priest molested him. I'm crying the whole time. And he goes, why are you crying? And I couldn't even answer. And he goes, you have to stop that. Nothing happened. This is anything wrong. This is how special friends react. Un so, brothers, did you hear that? According to the testimony of the molestation victim, he stated that when he started to cry and show grief, the priest tried to assuage a lot of his fears and his concerns by telling him, this is how friends react. That is a pederasty technique. That, that was the rapport that he was trying to develop with that young boy as a catamite, meaning a male sex slave. They also believed that they gained the energy from the small boy when they engaged in, in copulation with the little boy. Because there is an exchange spiritually. Every time that you have sex with anyone, there's an exchange spiritually that you have. Okay? And this is why I focus on these things. I've stated this previously. That concept of the, of the quote-unquote goat god or the god of lust, it comes from ancient Kemet, where he was known as Kanum, the creator god. Okay? K-H-N-U-M. And he's recognized as the Ba. B-A, i.e. the soul of Asar. 
Okay. So whenever you see these people praying to the Baphomet or to the goat god image, that's meant to be an allusion to the soul of Asar. Like, for example, in the film The Fallen, Denzel Washington is, is combating against the demon Azazel. The, the, the name Azazel literally means the goat god. Okay? So Azazel was jumping inside of the bodies of other people in the film and committing murders. And Denzel had to try to track him down to stop the murders. Well, well, in the ancient world, the goat god was also known as a god of fertility. Why is that? Because goats are known for, you know, their quote unquote lustiness or their eagerness to engage not only in combat with other male goats, but also with intercourse with female goats. And that's where we get the concept of the goat of Mendes from. Mendes was a city in ancient Kemet where the women would ritualistically have sex with an actual goat to, to show adoration for Asar. Once again, do not take my word for it. Please look it up. That concept of the goat god was transferred over to Greece where he became known as Pan. Un Please understand something. Pan was known as the god of intercourse as well with little boys and with animals. Particularly under the pseudonym of Ainus, I-N-U-U-S where Pan was known as the god of bestiality. So that's why in Hollywood, you'll see that many of these people, they're trying to, they're really trying to get the masses to accept the notion that it's okay, not just to be a homosexual, but to be a pansexual, meaning you have sex with everyone or everything, including children and animals. Like when the entertainer, Janelle Monet came out and said that she's a pansexual, that does not mean just men and women. That means children, that means animals, that means objects, whatever. She does whatever she feels like doing. And a lot of these people, they say things and it goes right over the heads of the masses because people, for the most part, they don't look up meanings, they don't look up words, they don't look up origins or etymologies, they really don't care. Their attitude basically is the, the Aleister Crowley credo of do what thou wilt, do whatever you feel like doing. Another priest, Monsignor Thomas O'Brien, allegedly helped facilitate the abuse by supplying alcohol and drugs. A decade later, Eldred... Now listen to this. Another priest helped facilitate the abuse by providing alcohol and drugs. So they were basically running a sex coven for little boys, a lot like the god Pan, who would lure boys out into the woods and engage in intercourse with them. They were known as the Lost Boys. I've said this before. This is where you get the character of Peter Pan from. Remember, once again, Peter, that name Peter, is not in reference to the Peter of the scriptures. It's in reference to Jupiter or Zeus. Okay? That's why I recounted the tale of Zeus turning into an eagle and carrying away Ganymede. Because that's where you get the concept of a catamite from or a boy lover. So all these gods of the ancient world, they were all pansexual, man. And they try to keep their their memory alive through these little cartoons and these little uh, you know, these little cartoon movies or animated films that you take your children to. You go to see Peter Pan. Why do you think Peter Pan dressed in all green? Because that's meant to be, you know, a little microcosm of him as the woodland god, and he leads the Lost Boys, right? Peter Pan claims O'Brien was one of three priests who sexually abused him, starting around the age of nine. He had me perform oral sex on him. Wow. And then threatened that if uh, I ever told anyone, I would be kicked out of the church and that my parents would disown me, I'd lose my family, and that I'd go straight to hell. The Diocese of Kansas City, St. Joseph, allegedly received... Hey, brothers, now, do you see that symbol there, right to the left of the photo of this pedophile? You'll see the, the upright crescent moon, as well as those two flowers. Both those symbols are an allusion to the mother goddess, Diana. Received multiple warnings over several years. That's where you get the concept of the quote-unquote Virgin Mary from. About troubling behavior. And once again, we see the rosary there. You see how they keep throwing these themes into all of these little shots? Behavior by O'Brien, including a letter from a nun who reported his extremely heavy drinking. Many of these nuns end up having sex with the priests. 
oftentimes not only because they cannot control their sexual urges, and I mean, that's natural. If men and women are going to be around one another long enough, especially in a closed space or a closed setting, something intimate is going to occur. I mean, of course, but beyond that, from a ritualistic purpose, when they get higher up the rungs of the Catholic Church, many of these females, they're purposefully impregnated by the priests and the cardinals and the higher officials so that when they give birth to the child, the child can be sacrificed in the black mass. After an allegation of sexual misconduct with a minor in 1983, the diocese sent him to a residential treatment facility, but allowed him to return the following year to a limited ministerial assignment. The church finally removed him from ministry in 2002. He died 11 years later. We're not going to pull our punches. Missouri Attorney General Josh Hawley recently announced the first statewide investigation into clergy sex abuse since a Pennsylvania grand jury report identified hundreds of predator priests. We have an obligation to the public to get all of the facts and to lay them out, and that is exactly what we are going to do. Lawyer Rebecca Randalls estimates there are thousands of victims across Missouri. She's Wow. She didn't even say thousands of victims across America. She said thousands of victims across Missouri. Wow. He's skeptical of whether the attorney general can conduct a thorough investigation. Is that enough? No. And the reason it's not enough is because the investigation that's being looked at by the attorney general doesn't have subpoena power. Unlike the grand jury in Pennsylvania, Hawley's investigation won't be able to force the church to hand over its documents. Hawley says under Missouri state law, only local prosecutors can issue subpoenas or convene grand juries. So he's relying on assurances from church leaders like St. Louis Archbishop Robert Carlson. Any files that they want to see will be available to them. Can you really trust all the diocese to turn over all of their documents to you? Of course not, because their real documents are not for public consumption. When you join the Catholic priesthood and you rise up high enough, then it gets revealed to you incrementally exactly what you're a part of, which is just an offshoot of the Babylonian mystery school system. By the time they get high enough, basically it's like, okay, I thought that I was joining something else, but this is actually what it's about. I have no other recourse. I'm already in too deep. It's like being a member of the mafia or... <laughs> Uh, any other organization where you're expected to keep secrets to you well if they don't uh, then uh, we'll make that fact known you want to believe folks when they say they're going to cooperate but you have to see what do you want the missouri attorney general to do open up everything michael sandridge and joe eldred and let me say this very quickly these two people right here they can never be in a productive relationship with a woman and and raise children and things of that nature i'm sure that Certain people may disagree with that or get upset by what I'm saying, but it's very obvious that both of these individuals are broken and they need, they need extreme psychiatric intervention and most likely will need it for the rest of their lives. Aldred settled lawsuits with the church in 2014. In an email to CBS News, the diocese says their specific claims were not officially investigated, but we do believe them to be victims of clerical sexual abuse. It needs to be uh, an honest investigation. If, if anybody's going to heal from this, if the church is going to heal, then they need... The church is not going to heal. The church cannot heal. The church was actually created based on the rituals of, quote-unquote, man-boy love. Okay? A lot of people might not understand that or believe that. They think that right now there's an issue with the Catholic Church. There's no issue with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is doing what it was set up to do. From the time of... Constantine all the way to now the various aspects of the comedic Babylonian mystery school system have incrementally reared its head more and more and more and more that's why the scriptures tell you about the deadly wound that was healed they need to rip that band-aid off and open it up clean that wound out for all to see it'll be ugly it's gonna be nasty but it needs to happen the Kansas City Bishop has said he's happy to cooperate with the Attorney General's investigation. The diocese notes that today any priest would be immediately removed at the first credible allegation. And we actually called all 50 states, talked to all the Attorney General's offices, 
Many of them have called the Pennsylvania Attorney General saying, how do we do this? How do we open an investigation? Because many of those states had priests from the Pennsylvania report pass through at one time. Oh, it's wow. so widespread and so sickening. The more you hear, the worse it gets. Yeah, so this is going on. We're yeah. going to hear more. This will continue. We'll be, we'll be talking to you again soon. Nikki, thanks. Well, it is very widespread. Um, it's beyond unfortunate, but it's very, very similar to any other type of infestation that's so severe that obviously nothing really can be reclaimed or saved. The whole thing has to be destroyed. But the Catholic Church will not be destroyed until this kingdom comes to an end because behind the scenes, the Catholic Church is running the vast majority of processes that are occurring all across the earth. As a matter of fact, many of these top bigwigs in media are Jesuits, and the Jesuits are basically just the CIA for the Vatican Church. The Jesuits hold many, many secrets that oftentimes don't get revealed. Okay, so now this is going to be the third and last segment that I'm going to use for this video here. So let's see what they have to say. Well, new hotline to report church sex abuse in New Jersey has been lighting up as alleged victims continue to speak out. And as CBS News' Lisa Rosner discovered, so many calls are coming in that some people can't get through. All I wanted to do was not be raped again. Damn. Oof. You got to give me a little warning before you say some stuff like that, man. I mean, shit. Uh, I, hopefully, this person here is getting the psychiatric support that he needs. Because it just goes to show you how heinous what many of the things that are occurring in the Catholic Church are. Fred Marigliano says it took him more than 50 years to speak out about being abused by his priest when he was 11 years old. The sobering story told to a crowd including William Cardinal Tobin at Newark's Cathedral Basilica of the Sacred Heart. Yeah, and I don't trust any of those so-called priests or so-called cardinals. I don't trust not one of them. Now it can be documented legally through a hotline created by New Jersey's Attorney General, which has been inundated with calls. It rang, you know, maybe like 10 times, and then it hung up, and there, a message came on saying that, you know, we're, we're unable, unable to take your call. I kept my secret for 20 years, and it, it ate me up inside. Be able to now call up the hotline, leave your name, leave your information, and let go of that secret, because then you could start healing. The New Jersey Attorney General won't discuss the number of calls, but confirms the volume is so high, he's had to add additional staff to man the line. Once again, brothers, a lot of these reports that we see pertaining to the ritualistic and uh, incessant molestation, adulteration of these children, it explains a lot as to why so many people today are declaring themselves atheists or non-believers or doubtful agnostic things of that nature and this is why the mainstream media is pushing this story so hard not not that it does not deserve to be pushed actually beyond deserving to be pushed this should be one of the the top stories but the reason why the mainstream media is pushing it is because indirectly they know that the church is associated with the bible so now now when people start to doubt the church and to look at the church as a bastion of hypocrisy that's how they're going to look at the Bible. That's how they're going to associate it. So the, the media does not really care if the church cleans up its act. They're more concerned with, with utilizing this situation to get people to doubt the, the, the significance of the scriptures because the scriptures are associated with the Catholic Church. Once that's done, the Catholic Church can go right back to business because the, the big business of the Catholic Church is not in assisting people in getting to understand the Most High anyway. The big business of the Catholic Church is acting as a worldwide influencer on how to enter through the doorway on the left-hand side to the spirit world. That's it. And that's who the Pope is. All right. That's who that's who Pan is. Like I had some woman trying to argue with me about Pan. She said Pan is a good deity. He's a woodland deity. Why is that? Because in many of these modern day, uh, these little wicked meetings that a lot of these women like to go to, they water down these various gods. They tell you that Pan was a god of love, and he was. He was a god of love. He was a god of man-boy love. Just like Bacchus. Bacchus was a god of love as well. Or in um, the British Isles, he was known as Sir Nunos, the stag god. Right? That's also an allusion to him being the god of lust. The god of lust. When I say lust, I mean not just sleeping with people of the opposite sex. 
sleeping with the same sex, sleeping with animals and all that. All right. So when you get an understanding of a lot of these these various uh, incarnations of the same entity, then we get a greater understanding of why things are happening, how they're happening. Another version of the stag god was Shiva. Shiva was also known as the god of, of, of animals and of nature, so on and, sh and so forth. The name Shiva means the shining one, right? Shiva, the shining one. I believe that when you go into the Aramaic, uh, the term Shiv means to shine, right? Or Shiva, the shining one, which is the same name as Kronos, right? The name Kronos doesn't just mean the horned god or the horned one. It also means the shining one. Okay, so basically all of these cultures venerated the same entities. It's just that when the languages were confused, they all took their own understanding to their own people. Last month, a Pennsylvania grand jury report accused the Catholic Church of hiding the abuse of more than 1,000 children over seven decades. New Jersey attorney Greg Gianfrancaro believes victims in the Garden State will surpass that number due to 1950s legislation that exempted the church from civil litigation. New Jersey was a safe haven for pedophile priests. Survivors say the state's statute of limitations has put a deadline on reporting abuse. But we asked Cardinal Tobin. Do you support eliminating it? Uh, yes, and I do believe that there's something unique about this crime. In Yeah, I'm sure that you would. <laughs> I'm sure that you would agree with that. You're just hoping they don't check your file. Because you, you look like, uh, you know, you look like you got something on your laptop, too, to be quite frank with you. I need to check this man's laptop. That uh, people often don't realize what happened to them until they are adults. The attorney general says the calls will be used to present evidence to a state grand jury. In Newark, New Jersey, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. But anyway, that's basically it on that, brothers. But I mean, by now, anybody who's researched the Catholic Church, you should know that it has nothing to do with the Bible whatsoever. Uh, as I started out the video by stating all the Catholic Church is is a tentacle of the Babylonian mystery school system. Even the so-called communion that you take, that wafer is really just the, the same wafer or the same quote-unquote cake that the women of Israel were preparing for the mother goddess in Jeremiah the 44th chapter around the 17th, 19th verse, somewhere around there. Okay, that communion has nothing to do with Christ and, and the disciples. They were at the Passover. So that communion that you take when you go to the Catholic Church, that's for the mother goddess. That's why it's inscribed, I believe, with IHS, which is um, which stands for Isis, Heru and Seb. The Catholic Church and the, and the entire so-called Christian church system is based on the veneration of Heru.